because I sort of just very, very briefly introduced it, I'm going to construct the step graph for this hilarious car park and how much it costs. And then we're just going to be briefly on the simultaneous equations so that over the next couple of days you can start to work on it. Okay? So, here's what I've got now. Welcome to the city. Now, you can see... Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's really annoying because it goes like one, one, two, two, three, three, four, one, and then it goes six. And then seven, seven. Let's have a look. I like the order. And what we're going to compare these two values, right? I've got um I've got two different quantities that I need to compare. Eliza. Oh, Eliza. <laughs> Do you remember? Do you remember when I showed you this? And I said, the reason why we're doing this now. Do you remember what the reason was? Because we have camp next week and we've got a lot of things. So what that means is, we want to use this time really effectively. The like clock is ticking, literally. I'd really like to be able to get to this point. You remember how you felt after the AT1 and when a lot of you got your marks back and you're like, I freaking nailed that test. It's because you were well prepared. Yeah. I did not we won't be well prepared mm -hmm. unless we get here. Is that a reasonable thing to aim at? Should we try again? Should we try again? <clears throat> Here's what we're looking at. Yes, I am. Well, I was going to say for the revision, do you reckon there's going to be algebra in the AP1? I would, like, I would guarantee that there'll be algebra in the AP1. Can we do like some algebra? Because like, I don't know why, but it's just the simplest things that got me off guard, but the hard things I was able to get. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I No, I can guarantee. I we'll talk about the content that will go into the AP1 at the right time when I give out the notification for you guys, which will be after camp. Okay. okay. In fact, it will probably be your first lesson. Look, after camp, you'll have your notifications. All right, now I'm going to show you, and I'd love you to have your rule there with a set of axes just like mine, how to construct this from scratch and how I go about thinking about it, okay? You can see, I've got two different quantities I want to compare. That's what we use these corner axes for, right? And there is a kind of linear relationship between them, but it changes as you progress. Okay? So what would you like me to put on my dependent and independent axes, on my horizontal and vertical lines there. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, which which do you think is going to be the independent? The time. Yeah, I think time is independent, right? And clearly cost depends on, time. depends on time, right? So therefore, I'm going to label just like you should down the bottom here. This is our time axis, okay? That makes the vertical axis the cost, cost. cost axis, very good. So I've got my independent and my dependent one set up. Then you can see, I need to units on these because like, like time is it, is it minutes, seconds, hours, that actually does matter, right? So I'm going to go for hours over here and dollars, okay. It's a bad day today. Yes. Now I will point out as well, I hope you've seen some of the graphs where instead of saying dollars, they'll say like, thousands of dollars because you're insuring some large quantity of money, okay? So do please pay attention to the axes and what units they're using, okay? All right, now, where we go from there, we now want to think about, well, as you step up, like literally step up, according to time, how much are you paying? You can see I've got some numbers here. What do you think makes sense as the last value to have on your horizontal axis? Now, you can see how many I put here. One, two, three, four, Five. I've put an extra one on the end here. You'll see why in a second because this actually is a little bit unusual. There are other situations which happen and I'm going to outline them in a second. Okay. On the vertical axis, we get to choose. Now the, there are some awkward numbers here, we've already noticed this. Okay? So you probably want to choose some nice round numbers that give you an appropriate top value. What looks like an appropriate top value for this? Nice and round. I think 80 would be perfect, right? We we'll definitely include everything under there. I mean, I suppose we could make it 77, it just makes it awkward. Okay? So I'm going to call that 80, and I have $10 increments set up, so you can label all of those. I'm just going to put in every second one, because I think that'll be enough to see what's going on. Okay? 
Now, at this point, we can do our steps, okay? You can see the second you enter, right? It doesn't matter if you stay there one minute, five minutes, or 59 minutes, you're paying this amount, $11, right? So come over to your axes. You just want to be right above 11, like this. Right above 10, rather. Okay. Now you'll notice I haven't put any start or end on this actual little interval that I've put here, right? I want to know though, like where am I going to go when I have my next line? For one to two hours, I've got 22. That's something like this. But you can see if I spend exactly one hour in there, it's kind of ambiguous, right? Which is why we introduced this newer notation. Which do you think the car park will charge you if you're there for exactly one hour? The higher ones. Clearly, they're going to charge you the higher ones because the house always wins. They're always trying to make more money. So therefore, it's this value that counts, not that one. Okay. So you've seen these filled and hello, these filled and hollow circles before. It means this is the value that matters, not this one. They should be zero to fifty-nine minutes. Well, but what about fifty-nine minutes and fifteen seconds? Well, <laughs> in the same way, once you've entered, the second you get into the car park, you're still paying. So that's why there's also a fill circle here. And then the pattern just continues. I put the rest of my steps in, and I just want to make sure that I'm good with my scale. So 33 looks like it's going to be about there. 44. Sixty, that's going to come up to here. Yeah, you see, I'm not the only one going crazy. There we go. And now we've got our last bit here. Now, I'm just going to make a slight modification to this because actually this is usually what happens in real life. Five to six hours, they haven't said anything about what happens after the sixth hour, right? What would you expect would happen? I, I'm pretty confident they're just going to keep on charging you that same amount. Part of the way that you can know that from the context is a lost ticket. If you lose your ticket, they charge you this. Why? Why? Why that number? Yeah, you could have been there for any number of hours and say, Ooh, I lost my ticket. I was here for an hour. Yeah, not really. They're not going to trust you on that. They will charge you the maximum amount. Which is why I think it's reasonable to then conclude 77 is right there near the top. I'm going to put it about there. Rather than it ending for however much longer you spend in the car park, they'll continue charging you that rate, just like it was for the last ticket. Okay. So, that's the way that works, okay? Step graphs are not confusing. Um, you just need to read your data carefully and construct them with care.